I mean, that's what I think it should be. Because, you know, like, like us, I mean, part of our things, we got, we got kids with shopping carts, and that's part of it. Then you've got, yeah, you know, no, you've got I certain hear. little things, you know. Yeah. So we've got the, you know, the flatbed or the big trailer, and it's got our new truck on it, and it's all full of lights and all that. And, you know, kind of get the full effect. Well, exactly. You want to see it in action. Exactly. You know? I, no, I agree with you on that one. I'm not sure what, what okay. they do on that. So okay. we have a question. So how are they going to get a good judging before the parade starts? The, basically, they'll be walking where all the floats are uh, getting set up at on right. Birch, 8th, and 10th, and they'll have a rubric and figure out the point score. Mm -hmm. But how are they going to get the full effect of it when, like he was saying, yeah. you know, part of his float, you know, they go down with shopping carts and ours, you know, I mean, is not going to be anything fancy, but, you know, our, I don't expect all my employees to come early. Yeah, but they're going to be all, you know, that's, that's all part of it. I, I will have to bring them up to a yeah. park and rec board and yeah. they yeah. can go <laughs> decide that. <laughs> Okay, well, <clears throat> let's get going, and uh, first thing, can we get a motion to approve the minute? Oh, here it comes. We'll wait just a second. Oh, there's Steve. Sorry, Blake. Just in time. Just in time. Just in time. Well, first thing, if we can have a motion to accept the minutes in the agenda. Make a motion to accept the minutes in the agenda from last month. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're good. Mike, you can go on. Okay, great. Okay, well, first item naturally is Winterfest. That is now upon us. Uh, so here's just a breakout of the various activities, and this is a flyer we have out in the public. So uh, vendors will be over at the fire station from 4 to 8 p.m., uh, we're getting a lot of sign-ups late in the game here, so last check was around like 18 vendors for wow. inside the fire department. So it's inside? Yeah, but... except Taco Loco, the uh, food truck, they'll be right outside the fire department. Taco Loco? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So will that be our only food truck then? Uh, Taco Loco and the pizza guy may be back here, the wood-fired pizza yeah. guy. If he can get back down the gorge, he's going to try to. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so they'll be open from 4 to 8. Uh, the Light of the Parade, that will we'll start shutting down uh, College Avenue at 515, and Ro Rotary's going to be helping with street closures, and I'll be closing down streets too. Uh, so College Avenue will be closed probably from about 515 till about 615. Uh, parade will will go northbound on College Avenue from a 10th up to Whitman. Uh, the staging areas for the parade floats will range from Birch Street to 8th, 9th, and 10th. Uh, where you go to check in at, there'll be a check-in booth. We moved it because last year <coughs> there was an issue with the fire department being able to get out the back for calls. Yeah. So uh, we're going to have the st uh, staging booth at the corner at 10th and Birch. So basically right by your house. Yeah. It'll be like yeah. right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll be right there. So, uh, Floyd's or a representative just needs to go to the booth, and then Jang or Carolyn will tell you where you're at. Cause so, they're not sending that out ahead of time like last year where she told us where to be? It, well, the, the map will be sent out ahead of time, too, but, okay. we, we, but we do want someone to actually like, check in so we know that you're there. Because uh, there were a couple of folks who registered and then didn't show up, and there were gaps. We had to work out at the last minute, so we're trying to yeah. deal with that. And then, and then uh, Charles and his big bike—they'll be kicking off the parade. You know that bit, big the bike, bit, yeah. the big bike, yeah. and, and people from Allegro. So they'll kick it off. 
Uh, so bike, the bike will be staging on College Avenue because it can't make it under the power lines on Birch Street and 10th. So they'll be waiting on College and it'll just go. Uh, but everyone else will be staged anywhere from Birch from basically Roseville back here all the way up to 12th and then 9th in front of my house and then uh, 10th from uh, College today and then 8th from College uh, today. Okay. So, per, so pretty much is uh, the same general area as last year, except the booth got moved. That's uh, the only. Is it, is it too late to sign up? No, you can sign. We're accepted until a day of. Okay, I, 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 I want to get in. It, yeah, I don't have any elves to help me. So I need some. <laughs> I, need some I need a team to decorate my truck. <laughs> you know, our banquet's the night before, and it's yeah. just kind of a hectic time. So. Um, I will be there if I can. Okay. So, yeah. cool. Right now we're up to 41 entries. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're up to 41, nice. and, and <laughs> people keep signing up, so yeah. it'll yeah. probably get up there. So, yeah. yep. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the staging starts at three. The judging will <laughs> begin around 4:45. Good point on the judging. So I need to talk to Randy, Grang, and Tito, and all of them and find out what they want to do about that because that's their latitude. Um, and then parade, they all begin at 5.30. Uh, past that point in time, they'll have the community gathering, which is basically vendors at the uh, inside fire department. And then uh, Chuck Hudgens, he'll be uh, the Santa Claus again. So he'll be at the fire department as well. And it sounds like one of the vendors had uh, musicians who were able to help us for the carol part uh, because at the last minute the university backed out uh, of providing entertainment because they're rehearsing or something for a well that's why I said but because they are rehearsing that night yeah for their Christmas concert that's what it sounded like but that irked me a little bit because they've known about this since yeah. like last January and I got the call about it last Friday and it was like oh go find someone it's like thanks yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> So luckily one of our vendors stepped up uh, because yeah, I, I called everywhere and everywhere else is booked so yeah. that left us in a lurch. <laughs> yeah, it's so late to do anything, everybody's already got their calendar. Yeah. It, exactly. Uh, pray the words, that, pray the words, yeah, they'll be around seven o'clock. Um, and then the tree lighting, you see the tree right out front here, they'll be at 745. The fireworks, it, that's going to be changed a couple minutes and the stuff that was given to you, the change was already on that, but it's 815 so that way people can get across the street because we had issues the last time. So. Yeah, so fireworks will be at 8.15. It'll be about a 15-minute show again at the old Rogers site. Um, so, and the, so yeah, that basically covers about uh, everything. So a lot of moving parts to this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the, um, <coughs> the parade enter entries will be getting a notice that says where the staging will be yeah. at. Yeah, yeah. Lisa will send out it, it'll, come, it'll come from Lisa, but then there'll be a check in booth, so we actually know folks are here. Yeah, yeah and they'll be right at 10th and Birch, and everyone can check in there uh, except for Charles. He can go check in at College Avenue yeah. with the bike, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah so they'll be this uh, Thursday. So, how many uh, entries did we have last year? Last year we had around 48. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so we're down a little bit. Keep in mind that of the 48 last year, about eight of them were from the university. So, if you, the university, they're pr they're going to have like two entries. The Aswu's going to have an entry, and then Pathfinders. Uh, but the other groups, we. Yeah, we made sure there were messages sent out on Youth Advisory Committee. Uh, they have two representatives from the university and they were trying to circulate it, but I think that's what accounts for it dipping some, the fact that we have uh, fewer, 
which was to be expected because last year was a bigger deal for them because that was 125th anniversary. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and didn't we move up the date a little bit from last year? No. It was the same time. It, it, it was exactly the same. Uh, the only difference, actually, it was the same Thursday and everything. The only thing is, it, it, it fell on their anniversary last year, December seventh, and this year that would have backfired because the seventh is on a Friday, so we moved it to the sixth, so it could stay on Thursday. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, if you know anyone else that wants to have a flood, I would like to keep the same numbers as last year, but <laughs> the form is on the website, so yeah. Okay, uh, any further questions on this one? Or? Okay. Uh, next one is the uh, Lodging Tax Advisory Commission, just letting uh, you all know about that. So they met and they approved uh, money coming out of the Lodging Tax Funds, and that money is basically collected from all the vacation rentals and the lodging at the university. So altogether, uh, they approved an expenditure of about $3,800. And out of that 1600 will once again go toward that marketing insert we had in the Valley Visitor Guide like last year. Uh, that really nice insert, we'll get that again. And then $2,200 was allocated to uh, make the 4th of July event bigger. So they allocated uh, funds for uh, entertainment next year and a bouncy house. Oh, good. So. Good. So yeah, that's uh, what came out of the Lodging Tax Advisory Commission. Okay. Uh, and then the next thing just to look at, and I shared this, and take a look at it, and if you see anything that would be helpful uh, to add to this, uh, I include a commercial property PowerPoint, and we basically use that uh, to market the available properties around College Place to developers and investors and so forth. Uh, we're for each property, we have uh, schematics of what it looks like and where, and then essentially who to contact. So take a look at that, and if you have any uh, comments on it, let me know. Was your intent to have all the businesses on that list? Oh, and the and the uh, development guide. That's just for the available commercial properties. Okay. So ones that are available uh, to for purchase or lease, bigger ones. Yep. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, and then the next thing, uh, I actually gave a presentation to uh, the. A school superintendent advisory group he has going on and it was uh, a lot of interest so I thought I'd share it with you all and it's just showing the various developments that are set to take place uh, around College Place in the next year or so. Some of it is stuff we've talked about in this group, other ones are relatively newer things that are going on, so I'll go over that. And if and some of it I'll be a little bit ambiguous on because there's some non-disclosure stuff afoot, but other things I can get into greater depth about. Uh, so I showed this little population target spreadsheet to show basically our growth. Uh, from 1950 to 2010, as you can see, it about tripled population in College Place. So, but it's about 1% steady growth per year. Uh, the next slide I find pretty interesting. It's 2010 to 2017 and 18. If you look, the slope of the population growth actually changed here, where it went from 1% to basically from 2011 to present, we're at about a 2% slope a year uh, for population growth. So compared to Walla Walla, we're actually about double percent. What happens when you build houses? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because because uh, Walla Walla is on this uh, gentler trajectory, and then we're on the steeper one. Uh, so as you can see here, in 2010 we were at about 8,700. 2018 we're just shy of 9,600. 
Uh, the projection they have for 20 years is uh, 10,825. I think that's a basically an estimate that the county has. Uh, I think that's a little bit flawed though because when you look at their growth model, uh, the spirit of the growth management law is actually that you're supposed to be allocating growth to your incorporated city areas that provide like urban level services because you know that's where the population is. And the strange thing is when you look at how the county allocates growth, they allocate almost an equal level of increase in population in the unincorporated areas, which doesn't really make sense. And then they even allocate a separate percentage to Burbank. But again, if you read the Growth Management Act, you aren't supposed to be doing that. So I think from a practical <coughs> standpoint, I think this number's flawed or oh. we'll, we'll, we'll get higher than that because the stuff I'm going to show you tonight, I could see, I could see that number getting hit next in, the next, in the next like 10 years oh. if that, if the economy oh. holds out the way it's been going. Build that big old apartment complex by Home Depot. Yep. You're going to be having 180 you know, units. 180 right there. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 they've just turned in final plans on Friday, so that's definitely happening. Uh, so housing tenure, uh, as you can see here, between owner and renter occupied, we're about fifty three percent owner, forty seven percent rental. Uh, married couples are about forty three uh, percent of the population, and then living alone's thirty six. And then to get to some of the uh, projects here, uh, the stuff that's happening right now is Hayden Homes. Uh, this is a drawing of the stuff on top of the bluff that was approved. Uh, they're working on this right now and they're trying to get the roads in before it snows and gets all messy and they're dealing with a bunch of storm water issues right now there. Uh, but with this uh, phase 3D right here, in this phase right on top of the bluff, uh, there's about 47 lots up there, believe it or not. Yeah, there's a lot of homes up there. Uh, at the foot of the bluff, there's a park property. Uh, if they can deal with the storm water and actually dry it out, we'll accept it as the park. That's where the tug of war is happening right now. Because uh, I told them unless they're donating canoes, we don't really want what property is a, is a park. And right now it's a bog area. So they're trying to deal with storm water. So this top part is about 47 lots. There's a part that was just developed in the last two months to the west. There is a loop right there. That has about an addition that has about an additional uh, 34 homes that just got opened up this year and then there's actually what there's actually another phase where they can fit in another street behind this phase and that has 22 more lots and then the final phase along Dones right here, if they can deal with uh, storm water, is uh, they are approved where they could do what's called like these wise size units, which is like affordable housing where they would act as the landlord. And that would have about an additional uh, close to about like 16 units in there. So Hayden Homes alone has a lot of, even though it looks like it's near its end, it actually has a lot of stuff left up there and all that's going to get done in about I'd say the next year and it's pretty amazing how fast they're able to get those homes built up there because at the beginning of this summer they barely had the road punched through and then by the fall I went up there and the whole uh, phase on this side they had completely built and people in the homes already so they moved quick <laughs> So that's happening. Uh, Villages of Fort Walla Walla is the next one right here. Uh, that's right behind Home Depot. Uh, this front two thirds right here, uh, they're, they're still talking with folks about who's gonna develop this piece because per our planned urban development code, that has to be uh, basically like a mixed use commercial. It can't be like just all homes. 
Uh, this back third right here, though, has been bought by a company called Fairing Group, and uh, they are they've been turning in their final plans. But that's going to be 180 uh, units of apartments in that back third. And as you can see, they have a little schematic for like a swimming pool and a clubhouse and stuff. So this back third will be apartments, and then the front two thirds, uh, we'll we'll see what that ends up being. Um, the front part here, we've had some discussions with a gas station for a corner part, and then uh, coffee over here. And that's just a bigger drawing. As you can see, even with the two phases, they still have some land in the back part of the bluff here that can be accommodating uh, for future commercial or uh, residential growth. Then the one I mentioned a lot here is uh, the Stone Creek development, and we've been working with uh, with uh, Mike McKiernan and Craig Christensen on this. Uh, that's about 260 acres, and uh, there's starting to be some very interesting discussions with developers on this. Uh, because in the budget for next year, I had it where we would take out a bond to start doing the trunk line. The interesting thing is it seems like these folks are so uh, property hungry for property, we may be able to negotiate an agreement where it might be substantially less. Uh, so I'm all about that. So uh, that's what we're trying uh, to do. We're to do a public-private partnership on that trunk line, but that remains to be seen. It's a moving target. Uh, all this here is, uh, it's diversity of land uses. So uh, this orange part here is commercial. Uh, purple part here is apartments. The blue section in here is like townhomes. Uh, red part here is office and hotel. And then all of this uh, like purple pink color, that's all single family homes in there. And there could be more streets that cut up the section here. They just made uh, ambiguous streets in this design because the idea is that they're going to start parsing off pieces of the property of various developers to get it going. So they'll sell off like sections. So is that College Avenue on the bottom? College okay. Avenue's right here. Okay, right there. The high school's right here, yeah. okay, gotcha. and then uh, Majanier right Lamperty's right up gotcha. here. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So that. So yeah, that is where we see a lot of our uh, big growth at. Uh, and then there's quite a few of other projects on the horizon too. Unfortunately, the dots I made you can't really see all that well, uh, but I can use a pointer to point them out. And uh, C Street, uh, basically right as you pass Home Depot, there's a bit of a, it, it's a house that has a bigger front yard on it. They has a fence that just uh, annexed in called the Stepper Edition. And that's going to be some multifamily, uh, they want to do some apartments over there off of C Street. Uh, the other one is over by Wenzel Nursery off of uh, Spitzenberg. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a, a U-shaped house off of Spitzenberg, uh, and that is at, there's actually an application on that to turn uh, mow that down and turn that into apartments off of Spitzenberg, about uh, 40 units. Well, I just want to surround the new mall area with yeah. all these apartments. Yeah, there there's actually quite a bit of uh, interest now, and then the and then the one that's really interesting is that there's a unincorporated piece of property. It's been strange. It's right in the middle of town here, off of Eighth Street, heading toward Lions Park. You know that oh, field? Yeah, that, that, field that's actually it's an island. It's not in the city yet. It is in the city, but it's not. Yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, that actually wasn't in the city. Uh, we it's just the big, the big field. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. An it's an island. It's a unincorporated yeah, county. A, there's kind of two lots there. Yeah, um, yeah. Doctor, um, in the house. yeah, yeah, yeah. Doctor, yeah. Uh, what's this? The the dentist down. Yeah, the, the dentist. Anyhow, it's his parents lived there, and they yeah. got they had that house that mm -hmm. I think is on an acre, and then yeah. the other piece is yeah. what four point eight eight. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what would he, so, <clears throat> so that property has just has just been no. 
Uh, that property's just been purchased, and we received an annexation application to finally close the island. And that's actually going to be like nicer single family homes in there. Yeah. Yeah, right next door is that gated community. Yep. Yeah. Well, and actually, one of the people that lives in a gated community is the one who's developing <laughs> it. So, yeah. Yeah, so there's uh, some homes that are going to be built over there. And then off of Whitman Drive over by Kiwanis Park, there's some, um, there's like an empty field over by Eagle Springs Memory Care. There's discussions about some single family homes going over there now, too. So, yeah, there's a lot yeah, I of. I think that population's going to go up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's my whole point. I think that county projection, because they're applying it to the unincorporated areas and Burbank. First of all, you can't do that per the GMA. Uh, but second of all, I don't. The target that they have for us, I don't think is realistic. I I think even if half of this happens, you're going to go well past that. So. Uh, and then here's the last thing, the UGA, this is uh, still going through all of the county's processes. Uh, basically, the this part, what's happening is uh, UGA, the state of Washington, is just really weird this way. So like back where I came from in Illinois, uh, if you want to annex property or plan for future growth, whatever your your city limits are for a city, you basically put in the mapping application a mile and a half buffer, and anything in that mile and a half is fair game. That's not how it is in the state of Washington. They get very uh, scientific about it, where they want to know exactly what properties in like the next like 20 years you think hypothetically uh, could develop. And, and then the county actually has to certify it, and then that's what's called your urban growth area, your UGA. And then technically, people who live in the UGA have the ability to annex into your city. If you aren't in the UGA, you actually can annex. You're just like out in the county. Um, the issue that we have had is that there's a, the Martin Airfield site was in the UGA, uh, the crazy thing when we went to go look at it is you have to assign a future land use to your UGA. And way back in the day when they did this, for some reason, they assigned it a land use of industrial out there, which doesn't really make sense because hypothetically that means you could put factories next to the homestead development, which... And you'd be running freight traffic through Wall Wall University, which doesn't really make sense. Uh, so, at, and not only that, but if you run the airport, uh, the Washington State Department of Transportation has all of these requirements about the heights of buildings and certain areas you can develop, certain areas you can't develop. So it just makes it a nightmare. So the general proposal with this, with the comprehensive plan is to do what's called a UGA swap. And what that would be is to pull Martin Airfield out of the UGA, which means that they would just stay in the county. Uh, the only part that would stay in it is they have like a little piece of property up on top of the bluff. And uh, that would stay in, and I would imagine likely Haven would be looking at that to continue homestead. Uh, and the idea is to move uh, this UGA down to along Pepper's Bridge Road and 125 uh, over by the Christ Community Fellowship Church because we have a we're going to be putting a, the new drinking water well in right there. There'll be a loop line right here, and then you have your fray the access off of 125. So the idea is that the area between 125 and Pepper's Bridge, that would have a future land use of commercial on it where stuff could happen. And then Soaring Hawk would just remain residential but would be brought into the UGA. So that's the general idea here to try to do a swap. 
Uh, and right now that's fumbling its way through the county process because the strange part when you do these UGA swaps is even though you would think of it as a, a local decision in the way it is and in a way it isn't because the city council says their preference but then it actually goes through a whole nother process with the Walla Walla County Planning Commission and then the County Board of Commissioners. So, and, and that's where it's like been, yeah, and that's where, and actually the swap right here, uh, it's actually been stuck in the county for like the last like seven months. We don't really know why, but because we had to pay for it to go so, through the so application. So 20 years ago, they said they, you know, they wanted to be, but then, hey, 20 years, 10 years, things change. Yeah. So. The swap thing, okay. Yeah. But if a city wants to change the plans of their city, yeah. Okay. So you got to sell it to the right people. Mm -hmm. you're saying. Yeah. In order to get that changed. Yeah. So in order for a swap to go here, we basically have to just get that through the county board for them to approve the swap and. The land, the landowners, uh, like the folks who own the empty land over at Soaring Hawk, the Hare Brothers, they're supportive of it. The Arbinis are supportive of it. Uh, the one wrinkle we're having a deal with now, uh, which irritates me because the only reason we're having a deal with it now is because they sat on it for the last like seven months, is apparently the airfield site here. It sounds like someone else is trying to buy it now, and for some reason they want to try to keep part of it in the UGA, but that only got brought to our attention like today. <laughs> so, yeah, it's always a battle, so <laughs> so we'll see where this goes. But this uh, basically, we're uh, it's going through the plant their planning and commission, and then the county board uh, this month, and something should happen. I would hope maybe because it's strange they they put our UGA process on ice for that long, and then Walla Walla had a UGA swap too, where they were going to pull out of an area south and then move north, and their stuff was put on ice too. But yet there was a third UGA uh, application. Uh, it was called a Bija. It's like a winery or something up Mill Creek that was submitted at the same time, and uh, that that somehow got separated and got fast tracked and pushed through like months ago. Beha. Yeah, Beha, that one. Yeah. So that got pushed through. Yeah, both of our stuff is like in purgatory. So <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> So yeah, we're trying to deal with all this issue, but really for the long-term health of the city, I, the the thing is is that the homes are a mixed bag. Like population growth to a degree is okay, but the big problem is that basically for uh, for like every uh, dollar of city services, uh, your single-family residential brings in like 80 cents. There, there's like multiple studies by Urban Land Institute that have certified that. So for because you know people are moving to urbanized areas, so they're expecting a higher level of police, fire, public works, parks, stuff like that. Uh, but then yet, like with commercial and industrial development, for every uh, dollar you provide them in services, you actually get back a dollar twenty. So that's why we're trying to open up commercial to balance this out. Because right now we're at a net deficit of that commercial property. And for every house you add, it's compounding the situation with uh, provision of services. Yeah, so. you don't have jobs, and if you don't have commercial to, uh, then where are all these people, how can they afford their, you know, you bring in the people, but if the work's not there. Yeah. Well, well, uh, well, I mean, the, the issue that we've had is unfortunately way back when, when people were doing their UGAs years ago, uh, Walla Walla was smart enough to grab the North Myra Corridor by Highway 12 up there. So that basically boxed us into the yeah. north. Yeah. 
So, and if you look hypothetically at where the market's at, it's where all your traffic counts are at. And College Avenue has, the traffic counts on South College Avenue are about 10,000 vehicles a day on College Avenue. Our traffic count, believe it or not, at College Avenue and 125 is about 20,000 vehicles a day. And that's where all your customers essentially come from. So really, for the future market of the city, that's the area we need to be. Because that Martin Airfield site, that just has a, a multitude of problems. Our wastewater uh, system over there, the line is actually about two feet from daylight. And so you would have to do a big lift station to serve that. So that'd be about $2 million to do that. Mm -hmm. And then you wouldn't want the freight traffic of run on Whitman, which means the only other way to get trucks in uh, would be for the county to improve last chance road and all that stuff out there. Yeah. which they aren't going to do <laughs> so uh that yeah so that's why we're trying to fight for the swap to happen yeah that yeah so yeah that that's the little presentation i did for the school board folks so they could see that because that's a question that they're grappling with at the school district because they uh took they did the whole bond issue and everything else and uh, the facilities they built they thought were going to last for a while and they're already uh, at capacity uh, at the schools because there's so many people who are moving here. Uh, so they're just trying to figure out how that all works uh, long term. Yeah, so any questions on that? Yeah, yeah, there's a, a lot of growth that's going to happen here. Uh, then the next thing is the uh, opportunity zone. Uh, so I included information to take a look at for uh, this. And what this is, is it has links to the IRS booklet that they put out as far as how to capitalize on this. In the Opportunity Zone, it was done, it was authorized by the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. And if you're going to invest in development, it provides a vehicle for you to defer capital gains taxes. And then for every year you keep your money in the investment, you get more and more of a credit on the taxes you would owe the federal government. Uh, and this is of interest in College Place because we pursued this earlier this year and all of College Place north of Lamperty is in the uh, Opportunity Zone. So you can take advantage of this. And actually, I think on a lot of these housing developments and commercial stuff, I think that's why you're seeing a lot of activity starting to pick up. Uh, because Walla Walla has a little bit of an area in an opportunity zone, but with us, it's about 80% uh, of the city. So, so yeah, I just brought this to your attention. If you know someone or if you are thinking of capitalizing on this, this has a bunch of resources on how to do that and essentially get money out of it. So it's basically working through the federal government when you file your taxes on investments. Okay, uh, the other thing, and this is more of just like an informational item. Uh, so when, and you, you can all take a look at this because historically the city uh, didn't really put one of these together ever. And I've tried to do that so we actually know where we're going in the future. Is uh, we started to put together a six year plan for capital facilities and what's needed to keep our system up and then also uh, prime it for the growth. And this is a plan for capital facilities, so basically investing in our sewers and stuff like that. We also have uh, sister plans for equipment replacement for our vehicles and then information technology as well. And I'm not going to go through all of this because it's a quite extensive plan, uh, but it's divided into our various departments. And I think it's something for the people need to be aware of too, because I think a lot of people when they talk about the city government, they think, oh, it's just, 
uh, why are they using all the money for it? And it's because stuff's expensive, <laughs> very expensive. So if you, so if you total up uh, the infrastructure need in the city here uh, for all six years, uh, for water, sewer, storm streets, it actually amounts to $81 million uh, mm -hmm. in, in deferred infrastructure. Uh, the, bi the biggest areas where our deferment is at is uh, we're actually doing better in water since we got the grants for the wells and stuff. Uh, our, the biggest things we're trying to fight is wastewater because, and I mentioned this, I think, at a prior meeting, but the state's making goofy requests on the wastewater Storm treatment. Stormwater wastewater? Yeah. No, that's separate. That's separate. That's separate. Uh, cause stormwater is the stuff that just runs off the roads from the rain and stuff like that. Wastewater is yeah. sewage. Um, and, and with the wastewater, we're fighting them a, a naturally occurring PCB issue, which is a mouthful. Uh, but trying to uh, come come to some sort of understanding uh, with that. Uh, so that's what's driving a lot of it. And then also our streets. Because while the city has been very successful and getting grants for federal streets, the problem is there's no grant opportunities for streets that are not federally classified. And you can only get streets classified if they have a traffic count. Basically, a little bit of above like 4,000 vehicles a day. So, uh, yeah, so you, so believe it or not, you can get 4th Street, Whitman, C Street, Large College, Academy Way. Those street in, if, in 12th, and if you've noticed, those are all ones we've been able to fix. Right. But your smaller streets like Bir yeah, Birch, 6th. All of those, yeah, all of those, you can't get any grants for. You have to fund locally. That's why when people gripe about, oh, why are you chip sealing when you put, like, the gravel on that's why I try to get the life out of it, because we don't really have the money to, you know, fix it. <laughs> so, so that, so actually, when you look, when you look, it it all boils down to quite a bit of a dollar figure. So the priority projects for this year, uh, and, I, and I've mentioned this one it last me in the trunk line, one way or another, getting that done to serve this and South College Place. That's about six and a half million. I think because people are champing at the bit to do development, we have a chance to do a public private on that. So that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, well, number one and number two, this is fully funded by grants and appropriations. Uh, that comes out to about seven million dollars to replace our two drinking water wells. Uh, the treatment plant, we need to start uh, showing marked improvement, the fact that we're trying to satisfy what they want. So we have to start doing engineering next year. That's about 300000 uh, C Street, this is a cool one. So we uh, got the announcement that we got the full grant to rebuild it. Uh, so C Street, they'll be done next year, and we'll be having sidewalk, uh, new uh, wastewater lines underneath it, new water lines, new street lights, and new pavement. Uh, and that amounts to uh, two and a half million to redo all of that. And then to renovate Lions Park to deal with the pond issue. Uh, and then splash pad, uh, nature play equipment, and a walking path around the perimeter. That amounts to two million. I think a lot of that is going to end up going into uh, fiscal year 2020 due to uh, fundraising for it. And then this just shows uh, basically a breakout for 2019 and then the six year period and I'll leave it there. So if you were to look at next year, the lion's share of the capital facility improvements is water because we're dealing uh, with the two wells and finishing that up. So water comes out to 52%, followed by wastewater at 25 and streets at 18%. If you're to look out at the full six-year picture, uh, the lion's 
share of the projects that are needed is this right this 45 percent is the wastewater system and most of that's driven by that treatment plant issue and then the local streets that comes out to 30 percent of the whole thing uh, just because they've been deferred for so long and that's something we're trying to figure out because right now our local streets are on a 200 year replacement <laughs> schedule yeah, yeah, two hundred. That that's why you see the chip seal Because, but what when I hear people say I hate chip seal as a bicyclist, I fully agree with them. I I oh, des man. I despise that stuff. But uh, we don't have the money to go rebuild. So, no. yeah. Water is way more important. Yeah, ex ex it's green. exactly. Exactly. Yep. So, so yeah, you can see a break out there. Uh, once we get the two wells done, we'll be sitting fairly okay with the water. It's just neighborhood replacements, uh, and that's uh, about 17%. And, we, and a lot of that's driven by the fact that we have water lines in really strange places because when they develop the older section here, there's stuff that goes, like, under people's garages and in backyards and stuff, and a lot of that's decaying. So as we move it, we're actually going to have to basically relocate the line from underneath people's stuff to the, the street. In fact, there's a line we're going to be dealing with next year. Uh, it's uh, it's on the block of C Street, Rose College, and Ash. Uh, we TV the, and there's actually like a wastewater line we found out where the whole bottom decayed out of it, and we need to fix it. Where it actually has like no bottom to it. It's just like dirt. Into the dirt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting yeah, stuff. <laughs> so I just bring this to your attention because you're all on the front lines and I'm sure you hear people gripe and stuff. And I put this in the newsletter that we send out a lot, but people tend not to like read or look at social media. So <laughs> It's good that the town knows what the heck's going on yeah. and what the town needs. Yeah, but, but I mean, when you see us raising rates and stuff, I mean, that's why that's a big number right there and, and as you look through this plan and this is online for your citizens to see we actually have all the projects mapped out where they can see all the stuff that needs to be done and then for every uh, project we have a map and then how to pay for it and what the breakout is so yeah it's all online for them to look at if they so choose so so yeah any questions on the other a lot of questions. We ain't got time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the other thing is, is just for you all to review for a later time, uh, is Mercy Corp. Uh, they are the ones who are developing uh, the whole micro business assistance program uh, that we've cooperated with the neighborhood banks and City of Walla and. Uh, what they are also looking at doing is establishing an investment vehicle uh, for folks who maybe don't have a ton of money but want to dabble in like investing in real estate and it's basically backed up by uh, loan guarantees from like HUD and SBA but it's a community investment trust so you can almost think of it like a real estate investment trust except more of like a protected one and Mercy Corp is looking at potentially uh, launching something like this in this valley where folks who maybe don't have a ton of money but they want to dabble a little bit into like socially conscious like real estate investments that they could go through this vehicle and then and there would basically be like an entry like re investing class for real estate and stuff like that that they would offer for folks who wanted to participate in this uh, but they're looking at launching this sometime next year almost in, in tandem with the second class of the micro business program that they're doing so so you'd basically be a shareholder of yeah. this trust yep yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, there's been some work like this out in uh, Portland, Oregon. That's where a lot of this comes from. The, some of them, I mean, I've heard some of them are big and powerful oh, yeah. organizations. 
Yeah, and Mercy Corp, they have a track record in there because they have similar trusts uh, functioning on Mississippi Avenue, Alberta, and the Albina neighborhoods in uh, North Portland. So, yeah, they're just looking to expand this way since they've established an office here. And the office started operating uh, last month. So, Interesting. yep. Okay, so that is that one. And then... And then the other thing is just as we're doing uh, community events, the thing to think about is if you think that there's a gap of some sort where we need to fill uh, something in, in the spring, uh, main reason being is we're thinking about stuff with, with Black Party. I'm trying to coordinate with the university. I'm just unsure if ASWU is actually want do if they if they have the membership where they actually want to help this year to the same level they did uh, last year. Yeah, uh, people, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. And then what the question becomes is if we aren't getting the same level of commitment out of them, do you want to do the same thing or do you maybe want to do something else where it's a little bit easier for everyone to pull it off so uh, I should have a final answer by them I would expect by next month uh, because because they they've been in communication with us it's just they don't have the same level of initiative like Tim had where it's like whoa event I mean he pulled it off and was like hey you want to help and it's like okay <laughs> not the same level of uh, of uh, pushing it through this year, but that's just something to think about as we get into 19. Yeah, because it was a pretty good success. Yeah. Block party. Yeah. And I don't know what exactly the college did, but you know, oh, they, they coordinated did. the whole thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, like Lisa and our staff. We